life is hard. It's rough, and many people despair of ever finding some meaning, let alone success. Ups and downs are consistent, with some feeling stuck, while others find joy in the smallest of things. Tall tall walls of insecurity block the way, with fear of the unknown littered around every obstacle. Realistic is the word that defines our expectations for every new task that we undertake is followed by the terms that this has high risk in it, will you be able to manage it? With all the other interchangeable dialogues, for success is a hard thing to achieve, but certainly not unachievable. Most of the time, it is within reach. Instead, people need a change of thinking or a helping hand to make it work. The first way to create a way for success in your life is by setting a substantially long time and short time goals. First, we should consider why short time goals are listed. This is because short time goals are more comfortable to reach and are a reliable confidence booster. They also connect to forge a path for the long term goals. Long time goals are more out of reach for some people and require time. Time spent on reaching long term goals relies on the person being motivated. Motivation is called on by fulfilling things, no matter how small it is. Take, for example, a software engineer who wants to build a mega project. He will work on the project he has set as his long term goal. But frustrations caused by failures may erode his commitment to the project. So, doing the basics may help him out a lot. The basic exercises will act as a long term goal and will be vital in the engineer completing the project. Results may rule the world, but to a man wanting success, the knowledge gained from failures should be prioritized. Life is about the journey, not the destination, a quote that perfectly illustrates what people should focus on. Mistakes don't matter if you succeed on the second try. A man who doesn't pay heed to those mistakes is only destroying himself, no one else. Results matter, but bad results hamper development, meaning that further bad results follow through. Adverse effects, if not used for bettering oneself, are even more useless. Knowledge of what one did wrong may lead to the person making the right decision later on in a similar situation. An example would be of a person taking an interview and making a mistake in one of the answers. Then, if the person focuses on the meeting, he will know that he made a mistake and that might make the difference for him in getting a job. Life is already hard without depression, clouds hanging over a person. Making the world a bit more fun for others in themselves reduces the chance of mental health, taking over a person's success and derailing a possible happy ending in professional and emotional terms. Treating yourself after work, no matter how small the task, makes those boring. Mundane, but incredibly essential chores easier, detoxing the mind into liking the boring parts, and generally causing one to be more efficient in his task to fulfill his goals. Depression is challenging to deal with, but people can defeat it by confiding in therapists, their loved ones, etc. No matter how much you love your work, there is always a seed of doubt that takes root when people criticize it. People love to bring each other down. Humanity has always been like that. Competitors find it easier to destroy than to create, and that's why plunging into your negative thoughts that have been fueled by other people is such a bad idea. Backstabbing in this term means to have people talk behind your back, but in this case, you have to feel the full one jealousy and demeaning attitudes towards your work, and that is incredibly difficult. It varies from person to person, but if you concern yourself with your work and your loved ones, it will be infinitely better than facing the criticism full on. Imagination and the ability to see positive in any situation is a gift. There is always something to learn from, and there is still something that can be considered as good or decent in any scenario. Even if something wrong happens, one can look back and think that it's good that it didn't happen to anyone else, taking the burdening route that pushes the blame on nobody, or they can blame the entire universe for conspiring against them. A point that may seem burdensome, but is correct on many levels, is the need to push oneself. Putting yourself in a box when you don't have any supplies and weathering the storm by remaining in that box means that you won't have any food, and it was because of the lack of trying. Even if the situation is difficult, if one puts himself in a scenario, 
he will find out if it is as dangerous as it seems. That is not to say that people should charge in recklessly, abandoning all caution. Pitting yourself instead of pitying is the general rule of thumb for successful people. They don't stop trying, for the lack of a better word. They learn from mistakes, they move on. If they face another situation similar to one in which they failed, they already know what to do, so they succeed. Distractions are a great way to destroy any shred of hope for a successful life. Temporary pleasures aside, they only offer meaningless progress in paths that treading on will never bring success in any form. These things include addictions, which are an already dangerous path to walk on if you're successful, but almost certainly fatal if you're trying to find your way. Even if one doesn't fall to the temptations, rehabilitation takes time, and one might not be as good in things he was before. The cold reality of life is that others are too busy looking after their own needs to look after yours. You are the captain of your ship, and mutiny is a sign you have failed. If there are people who offer to steer your boat, take that as a sign that you are failing, and you must act fast, being rational and calm. After all, your life is about you, and you, the sooner you realize that, the better. Trust is a valuable thing, all the more when it comes to making important decisions in one's life. The most anyone can help, by lending a helping hand or an idle ear. Thinking that you can receive more, is an unwise decision. None wants to help if they don't receive anything in return, so staying frosty and unwary is the right choice. Staying deprived of human connections is not the right choice, however, with good friends and a trusting family, one of the few you can count on to be reliable. Scheduling is an arduous task, but well worth it. Knowing three steps ahead, planning for things to fail, even with an excellent pass rate, is a sure success move. Planning means that you prepare for counters to failures, giving you satisfaction if you don't encounter any setbacks, and the comfort of knowing how to deal with setbacks if they do venture into your territory. Meaning that if you prepare for failures, you are setting up for wins in two absolute circumstances. Contingencies can arrive without forewarning, so any plans to deal with them are a good reminder that you're winning. Setting up projects for months is nerve-wracking and carries a considerable risk of being disturbed. Nevertheless, it sets the heart at ease at having concrete plans and counters to anything that can go wrong with them. Slowly falling in a set schedule can help set life straight and is a massive reason why entrepreneurs are successful the way they are. Positive relationships with colleagues, loved ones, and people of higher standings can be beneficial both in the long term and short terms. Having a good relationship with your colleagues means that you can be helped out more and you can learn various skills that you wouldn't otherwise. Loved ones offer a helping hand in trying times and sometimes a roof over your head or financial help. People of higher standings can be of assistance in ways that they can be a way to jump up the hierarchy, impact your learning with experience of how they got up the food chain, and be a good listener, etc. Burning out is a huge no-no. Burning out means that you haven't set aside some of the previous me time, and that takes the interest out of your goals. The withdrawal from burning out is worse than taking some time out and focusing on what makes you happy. Diversify yourself. Switch between relaxed and passionate, alone and with others, still and active. Think of a change in scenery. Focus on anything other than work. Curiosity. Link to knowledge of what makes you tick, what makes you scared, what makes you active, etc., is the thing that you need to adopt. Burning out is probably more catastrophic. The more one hears about their negativity, the fear of knowing that burning out is real and that it can mean that you didn't do this or that enough is unnerving. Burning out can also be used to grow, though it carries considerable risk and is not controllable. Goals, imagination, burning out, and all the other points are just reminders. The real point is that success isn't defined by money, although it might feel that way. Success is more of contentment achieved when someone fulfills his goals. Hence every motivational speaker turns to the topic of how to find success in life, an alternative title to how to fulfill your goals.
these points are small reminders of what everyone needs to do, keep the focus on their goals, push themselves, and take well-deserved breaks now and then, making success in any form inevitable.